Namato Ratana Tayasa. May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. And my respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, today is Sunday, the 12th of uh, April, 2020. I'm Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center in Aberdeen, Scotland. So today is uh, Sunday, Easter Sunday, and we had a um, very busy day from morning, from morning till now. It's a very busy day today. We had an uh, early morning chanting, meditation, and then again was a uh, chanting, uh, nine o'clock. Uh, the special chanting along with the other monks, other temples in the UK, a special chanting for the, all who are having a problem, and also particularly it was for the uh, those who ha who are suffering from a corona virus, and it was <coughs> at uh, nine o'clock. And then followed by we had uh, a special ceremony at. Uh, one o'clock and that was a two section um, well, first was a blessing ceremony and uh, second was the remembrance ceremony initially we were planning to have it outside of the center in our garden and we prepared it so good and it was so nice weather but we had to cancel it because the heavy wind and rain fall down so we had to cancel that but however we did it inside the center uh, so celebrating the Songkran festival and the Songkran or the Asian New Year so basically New Year is not begin yet it hasn't been uh, tomorrow will be the uh, New Year uh, so tomorrow is the New Year in Asia uh, and it's a big event but unfortunately we won't be celebrating this year so i have requested you all to create your home as a, a temple uh, creating a temple before i go on i would like to extend uh, my appreciation for all the donations so thank you very much for all your generous donations towards the center right so today is easter sunday and which is a very important day in Christian calendar. Uh, people will celebrate it as the day of a resurrection of the Jesus Christ. Somehow come in the same time of a new year. So basically in new year we have to reflect on something that we have done and just leave it the past and then welcoming the future which is coming to start tomorrow. And I would like to tell you a story, not a story, but um, it relates to our day-to-day -day life. And that's the, uh, the, this is from the Songkran festival that I summarized, uh, or the summarized from what I can relate to the present day. Uh, so this, basically Songkran or the new year is moving from uh, one time zone to the next time and that's how the new year begins yeah. and uh, in the most of the Asian countries now uh, if it's not locked down people will travel back home and meet with the families and stay with the families celebrate with the families uh, and now but this won't be happening this time and nonetheless if you are staying together in your family uh, then make make out of it uh, make best of out of it so do not forget to live uh, to, to enjoy this family time in the meantime also thank giving thanks to our parents uh, and also our ancestors and if possible asking uh, blessings from 
our parents or our uh, grandparents if they are living together then you are lucky one so you could have go and pay respect and ask for forgiveness and um, also blessings for the uh, the new year to come uh, so new year to come and this is i think among this is the most important is ability to uh, forgive and forget whatever things may have done in the past within this year uh, towards anybody or anyone some ha uh, some anyone has done anything the ability to forgive and forget and then as the new year begins well just new things begun um, there is a sayings that where is the blessings in the morning and where is the blessings in the afternoon and where is the blessings in the evening so if you know the answers for these blessings in the morning blessings in the afternoon and blessings in the evening where do you think that blessings is so you can text me or type me type on it what is the blessings in the morning what is the blessing in the afternoon and what is the blessings in the evening so i will leave it this question to you and wait for the answers from you guys who are listening and i will go further on in thailand the songkran or new year day celebrated with uh, normally celebrated um, by the playing with the water so that's why people also and particularly in the west uh, known the Songkran festival as a water festival so everywhere people will be playing with the water and splashing water and in Chiang Mai the northern Thailand in particular there is a huge event and there will in in Chiang Mai there will be a Buddha statue coming out from the chapel and uh, processing around the city to bless the whole city and during this procession people will be splashing the water and celebrating it so nice water i want to emphasize on on, on a water the subject of the water when you look at the quality of the water it's so soft quality of the water is so soft when we want to grab it we cannot grab but it just floats and there is no way that it won't go in and this water also makes things together yeah? cohesion so making a cohesive um, cohesiveness in any items suppose if we don't have this water quality then again we want to be in one piece so water keeping us in one shape it's called gana making together and this water again if you put any jars it turns into that jar but it maintains its quality the water and if you put any other colors then again it transforms into new colors that you have added in but it has got its own quality of water it preserves if you take the color out what remains is the color it is the water the pure water so and in the meantime if the the um, water quality water become a uh, harsh it can destroy anything it can destroy anything and the same if the water persistently staying or uh, living uh, staying at one place for a longer period of time it also can damage to something else to, to the, the, the a jar so the quality of the water is so great uh, that it's very flexible very soft and very adaptable an ability to be maintain 
its own quality at all the time. Doesn't matter what happens. And that's same with our mind too. We are also same like the water. When we were a child, we had a different perspectives. We have a different perceptions. And as we grow up, we put so many new perceptions in with us. And that's become identity. So we become a, a, like um, belongs to one nation, belongs to one ethnic group, belongs to one religious group, like that. So we create boundaries after boundaries, boundaries after boundaries. And that's why our mind is like that. So our mind is like the water, pure water. When we were born, we, we were just the pure water, which was not affected by anything else. But as we grown up, along with the father, along with the mother, along with the society, along with the family, then we add up colors. We add up different shapes in it. And as we grow up, we shaped by those backgrounds and we were known by those colors like if you put a tea bag in a hot water then that's become a tea no more water and we classify it as a tea and then if you put a little bit of a, a sugar, uh, uh, milk in it's become a milk tea if you don't put a milk then it will be black tea like that and it's become a, if you put a green tea, then that's green tea, no water anymore. If you make it a coffee, then it's become a coffee, but not a water. Yeah? So it changed. Yeah, but if we ask, where is the water? But the water is there. The same with us too. Our consciousness is still the same, but we have added on so many colors, so many shapes in it. And that's how we identify. And we grab on that identif identification. We hold on to that identification. That's why people uh, sometimes ask me where I came from. If I say I'm from Aberdeen, then they normally ask me, no, 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 I mean, where are you from? So that basically asking my birthplace, asking where I came from. As soon as I reply them that I came from Nepal, then I, ah, I thought so. So that was the response. Yeah. And if I speak Thai at all the time, well, normally I speak Thai language most of the time. It's like become a, my first language. I speak more Thai than any other languages. I write in Thai than any other languages. So, my heart or my work, the way I live, culturally and everything, like a Thai-ness in me. So people again sometimes ask me, are you born Thai? And I said, no, then they're surprised. See, like that. These are the identities that we yeah, took it on. So uh, along with that, our perception also changes. And we hold, if we hold on to that perception, then that creates the boundaries, that creates the fraction. But in a reality, these are none of them with us. So attachment to these identities are the problem. So practice of a meditation is simply to understand these colors, these shapes, these names, these backgrounds, these cultures, and how it is affecting us. <laughs> and we will be able to let it go one after another, one after another, one by one, one by one. I'm not saying that they are important, they aren't important, they are. But in an ultimate sense, they are not. We are all humans. We have all red blood. Doesn't matter where we came from. We all have a subject to sickness. We all have subject to old age. And we are all subject to die. We cannot deny. We all 
hungry. So we have to eat. So we cannot deny. It doesn't matter people coming from east or people coming from west. We are ha we have a same. The only difference is our perception and our holding on to it. That I am coffee, I am tea, I am uh, green tea, I am black tea, I am uh, coffee, this white tea, so and so. I am a red, I am a blue, like that. But in ultimately, all these came through the water. The pristine purity of the water is still there. Power of the water is still there. So practice of a meditation is to see that how we have been conditioned with these things. An ability to understand it and let it be. We are not holding on to it. We are not taking on board and causing the friction between me and you. Yeah? We are not conceived by that. So as you develop mindfulness meditation, as you realize within yourself this mind, this consciousness, how it is conditioned and in a purity it is not what is it supposed to be, then we will be able to see the purity of our heart, of our mind. And we will be able to adapt and adjust in anywhere. It's like the water adapting to different jars. You will be able to go into any society, any community, and then be like them. Ability to merge in. Ability to tune in. But if you are taking with yourself the culture, the, the, your nationality, your religion, your ethnicity, then you cannot mix in. You're saying that I am Buddhist, you are not. I am Muslim, you are Christian. I am Hindu, you are Buddhist, like that. Then we cannot merge in. We cannot tune in because you, we already have created this boundary. But in deep in our hearts, we are all same. We all have a condition of a conditioned consciousness. But somehow, over the period of time, we just put it in colors and um, different shapes and um, cultures. So as we develop our understanding in uh, through the practice, we see the purity of our heart, purity of our mind, and we will be able to reconnect with every one of us, not only the humanity, but also with the other sentient beings and also with the nature, right? So my first question again, what is the blessings in the morning? What is the blessings in the afternoon? And what is the blessing in the evening? So I'm waiting for your response. You can uh, re reply to me on a Facebook. So. Uh, before the end of the talk or reflection, I will give you the answers for it. So again, what is the blessings in the morning? Uh, in the morning, what is the blessing in the afternoon, and what is blessings in the evening? So this is the uh, message for this New Year festival that is celebrated. Okay, so that's why. So coming back to the uh, the, the our uh, reflection. So that's why. When we meditate, we are trying to understand the purity of our own mind. How our mind is conditioned. How this consciousness is working. And this consciousness which is conditioned, created uh, by uh, the culture, the nationality and so and so, you know, the religion and so and so, we will be able to see that. And ultimately we have all the same purity of the heart, purity of the mind. Now, and we gradually will be able to eradicate those boundaries. And ultimately we find that you and me are the same. I feel pain, you feel pain. I feel sick, you feel sick. I get old, you get old. And I'm going to be dying soon, who knows. 
you're going to die too, which we cannot deny. We are all subject to these, and we realize that. And we will be able to tune in with anyone, we will be able to adapt in any situation, and we become happy. We able to adjust in any situation, anywhere. Yeah? So that's the beauty of the meditation. And that's the beauty of the uh, practice. Yeah? So the ability to get rid of our views, our identities, yeah? ability to understand that you and me is no difference. And that sort of a mentality, that sort of a state of the mind, we will be able to develop, develop in us. An ability to adapt, adapt, an ability to stay in every situation without harming ourselves and then harming others too. And this is the perfect time, nothing to do, nowhere to go. Meditation is so good friend, noble friend that will be staying with you helping you to stay calm, stay peace, stay happy. A beautiful tool. Yeah? So, don't forget to practice meditation. Yes, Ranjani, morning with positive attitude towards the day. Hmm, that sounds quite a, a good one, yeah? but not right one yet. Yeah? So, okay, I'm not waiting for any response now uh, because we have a very limited time. And we're going to have a chanting and a guided meditation later on. So, I will give you an answer. Okay. So, before giving an answer, I will tell you the story that the uh, human mind was so talented that even the Lord Brahma Kapile wanted to wanted to find out that how human mind works and how much they know. So, Lord. Brahma Kapila came down to uh, came down on earth and asked this wise man called Dhammapala that what is the blessings in the after uh, morning in the afternoon and in the evening and there was a betting that if you cannot answer your head will be chopped off and if you can Lord Brahma uh, Kapila he will be cutting his head too so there was a seven days time and Dhammabala and he went on searching and tried to find out the solution for this blessings in the morning, blessings in the afternoon and blessings in the evening. But he couldn't find. But at the end, on the seventh day, he was able to respond that morning blessings is in our face. Yeah, in human face. So that's why early morning, once we wake up, before we go out from the house and doing any other businesses, we clean up ourselves to maintain our feature or personality. By uh, if you're a ladies, uh, you, know, you will not go out from the house without any makeups just to make yourself look better. Yeah. So the first blessings is to make up yourself in a cheerful, smiley, and happy. So that's the first blessings. So first blessings is in our face. Wake up, do not do anything, be mindful, go into the toilet, make up yourself, cleaning yourself, and then cheer up yourself. Yeah? When you cheer yourself to yourself, and then that radius to other. And that normally I call, have you ever smiled to yourself in the early morning? Or have you ever told yourself, darling, I love you, yeah, in front of the mirror, so you can try. So the first blessing begins from there. Second blessing is in our chest. When we go out and work or go out to do our businesses, we go with full confidence in our heart. We know that what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it fully. And when we do fully, with confidence and blessings becomes. We have no regrets and whatever we have done, it has given us a reward. Yeah? So that's why whenever you go out working in offices or any jobs that you are responsible for, 
do it fully do your best and outcome will look after yourself so that's why the second blessings is in your chest and the last blessing which is the uh, in the evening and that is a blessings in your feet and that simply means when you come in home leave everything behind the door do not bring things into your house remember to wash when you wash your feet then that means you're leaving everything behind and you're coming back home this is the place that you feel comfortable this is home where your heart is spend time for yourself spend time for your family when you are at home and that's how you bring blessings to you so that's why morning blessings is in our face afternoon blessings is in our chest and then evening blessings is in our feet so these three blessings are very very important now although this lock up time we won't be using this two blessings like a facing face the morning blessings and the afternoon blessings but the evening blessings again do not forget yeah? do not bring all the past and you know work uh, uh, thinking about it and worrying about it and then bringing it to the conversation and debating and feel, finding very uh, uh, difficult time within yourself and your family members so don't forget that right so with that think of the blessings morning blessings afternoon blessings evening blessings and then practice of a meditation is simply to make your mind into the pure water so you will be able to adjust and ability to uh, adapt in every situation and finding the peace and happiness in your life okay so don't forget to practice meditation continue practicing practicing whichever whatever ways you feel comfortable so with this reflection i end tonight's talk and also i would like to invite you to come and join with our uh, evening chanting so tonight's chanting will be english pali and english chanting and after the half an hour chanting will be a meditation a guided meditation so you are most welcome to join and furthermore again uh, thank you very much uh, everyone for the generous donation towards the center uh, to keep up keeping the center and all the um food and other necessary items that been dropped off at the center with this we'll see you again